Today, I'm gonna show you how I edit my audio in DaVinci Resolve. So basically what tools and effects I use to clean up my audio and my voice to make everything sound a little bit better, including the background music. Now, first of all, guys, small confession, that title, how I get perfect audio in DaVinci Resolve, well, that's not entirely true. Of course, my audio is never perfect. I'm not a sound engineer, okay? I'm just a guy. A photographer? Yeah. Videographer? Sure. But a sound engineer? No. And also, if there's one thing I've learned running this channel, it's don't go for perfect, because you'll end up in a stretches on rent, as we say here in Belgium. A street without an end. You know what I mean? And a lot of frustration, that too. So yeah, for example, right now and for the next few months, they're doing some construction work in front of our apartment and my studio is facing the street, so you might hear it every now and then. But that's fine, don't worry about things like that. All you need to do is record, okay? Okay. But anyway, uh, let's start with the gear I use to record my audio, because that's where it all starts, right? I record my audio with the Octava MK12 condenser microphone into the Zoom H5 recorder. That's it. Now, the Octava is a great microphone, especially for that price, but it's definitely not perfect. It picks up a fair amount of echo and room noise, maybe some noises from the construction in the street. So, you know, what I wanna say is that if you want that smooth, clean, boomy radio sound, well, first of all, you need a radio voice. You need the voice for it. But in that case, it's probably also better to get a microphone that's closer to your mouth. Or, if you don't want it in the frame, one of those long shotgun microphones. They pick up a lot less room noise and echo, they're much more directional. But I think the Octava sounds great, like I said, especially for the price. Uh, it sounds natural and clear, my voice sounds like it actually sounds in real life. And sure, you can hear that I'm in a room, but, you know, I'm in a room. So, yeah. I just like that natural sound. And so, guys, also remember that if you want that boomy, clean, smooth radio sound. You can't make the sound recorded with a microphone like this sound like that. It doesn't work like that. You can't get that sound just by editing your audio in DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't work like that. You need the microphone for it. Every microphone has its sound. Now, of course, also don't forget that audio treating the room is super important. I have these audio blankets, some foam panels, that all helps to take away some of that echo and the room noise. But anyway, now let me show you what tools and effects I use to edit my audio in DaVinci Resolve. To clean up my audio a bit. Not to get it perfect, but to get clear, good sound. That's the goal. And again, like I said, I'm not an audio engineer, so if I'm doing something wrong or if there's something that I could do to make it sound even better, let me know in the comments. Just drop it in the comments and you know, I'm also here to learn. We're all here to learn. How cozy. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I have a clip of me talking here. First thing I wanna do is right click and normalize the audio to raise the bass volume a little bit. And then let's go to the Fairlight tab. Our audio is on audio track one. And the first thing I like to do is set the order of things here. I want the equalizer first, then effects and then dynamics because I want to get a good bass audio first before I do the dynamics or compression. Now, if you want to make your audio sound like an old telephone, for example, you know, a heavy effect, then of course you should put effects at the end. But that's not what we're doing here. Then let's start with the equalizer. And what I want to do here is get rid of some of the background noise, a little bit of the echo, the room sound, you know, not too much, but just get rid of a little bit of all that. I just want to make it sound a little bit better. So first, I get rid of the super low frequencies that are not in our voice anyway. So select band one, and you can safely cut out everything, I don't know, below 90-ish, 90, 100, something like that. Then for band two, select this icon, increase the Q factor all the way up, and then pull this up here. And now I'm gonna try and find any weird sounding frequencies. And it's just a matter of listening. So play the clip and listen. My voice usually is all over the place. I, I usually try to tone it down a little bit. It's difficult, I try. How much? Well, that depends on the voice. My voice usually is all over the place. Here it sounds a bit tinny and echoey. So I'll pull it down a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. If you do it too much, then it'll sound weird. And I just do the same for three, four, and five. All over the place. I. I usually try to tone it down a little bit. 
it's difficult, I try. And then six, I use to cut out the highest frequencies, you know, frequencies that are also not in our voice. And that's basically it for the equalizer. Voice usually is all over the place. I I usually try to tone it down a little bit. My voice usually is all over the place. I, I usually try to tone it. And next is compression, right here, double click. And what I wanna do with the compressor is get rid of the high peaks in the audio. So if you look at the waveform of someone talking, there's like a bass volume where the person's voice sits most of the time, but some sounds or when the person gets excited or something like that, the volume will peak. And we wanna get everything around the same level. Not exactly the same, but around the same level. So then we don't have those peaks. How much? Well, that depends on the voice. My voice usually is all over the place. I, I usually try to tone it down a little bit. It's difficult, I try, but some people sound a bit more monotone, you know, and they won't have those high peaks. So it all depends. And by the way, if your voice sounds a bit monotone, you can make it sound a little bit more upbeat by adding background music. And I get my background music from Audio, the sponsor of this video. Now, when it comes to background music, you can of course use any music you want, but I usually prefer songs that sound a bit more in the background, you know what I mean? So my favorite filter settings for background music are mood chill or happy, instrument bass, and then video theme educational. That's where I find most of my background music. Or a playlist like Smooth Grooves is also a good place to start. And you can use their music for social media and YouTube, but also client work, no problem. And right now, a lifetime music subscription is just $1.99. Just use my code and link in the description. And that lifetime music subscription gets you unlimited downloads from the entire catalog for life. So go check it out and thank you Audio for supporting my channel. Okay, and now back to Resolve. So turn on the compressor and the first dial here, the threshold, that's the dial that decides at what level the compressor kicks in. And then the ratio is the strength of the compressor. So it decides by how much the compressor will bring down a peak in the audio. And the key here is actually to not make it too strong. If someone is getting a bit excited when they're talking, you don't want to cut out all that excitement, you know, limit it. You just want to bring down the peaks a little bit so that everything sounds balanced. That's it. Usually something around two or three to one sounds okay. And then again, it's just a matter of listening and playing around with the settings. The attack is the speed of the compressor, how fast it kicks in, and you want to keep it pretty fast, so a low number, and then hold and release I usually don't touch, but you can play around with it. It's how long the effect lasts and how fast it lets go when someone stops talking. Okay, and another thing that's super useful here is gate. So sometimes for whatever reason, my breathing is a little bit louder. For example, now I have a, I have a cold, I think, and then my breathing sometimes is a little bit louder in between words or sentences. <sighs> You know, that, or sometimes there's some unwanted clicking noises or I don't know, some things, it happens. My mouth and tongue have a life of their own sometimes. But the good thing is that you can get rid of that with DaVinci Resolve. So with gate here, just play around a bit with the settings and then listen to those unwanted sounds. For example, a breath. Here is a deeper kind of loud breath. But it's difficult a little bit. It's difficult a little bit. It's difficult. And you can almost get rid of that entirely with gate. A little bit, it's difficult. On a little bit, it's difficult. On a little bit, it's difficult. On a little bit, it's difficult. Just don't overdo it. Again, it'll sound weird, but you'll hear it right away when it sounds weird. But this way, you don't have to cut out every loud breath. It will do it automatically for you in the whole video. And with makeup here, you can bring the overall level back up. So, to make up for the compression that you did. Easy. Technically, you can go all the way up until you see the red line here, but the red line means you're too high, so bring it down a bit. But usually I bring it down a bit more so that the output here is around minus five dB-ish. And look now at the difference between the input and the output. You can see that the input is all over the place. It has those peaks but the output stays around minus 5 dB now. All the peaks are gone. Okay, and then a few effects that I usually add. First, the de to calm down the sharp and loud S and SH sounds. Hit the plus here, then restoration, fair light, de -esser. 
and I usually leave it on the male S. But it depends on what your voice sounds like, so you can play around with it a little bit, make it a little bit stronger, less strong, whatever. You have to find out what gets you the best result. And then the second effect here, channel, and then vocal channel. I sometimes use this to add a bit more clarity. So I bump up all the frequencies around 5000 Hz. Now, of course, you don't have to do this all over again for every video. You can make a preset of all these settings. Just go to Fairlight here, Presets Library, set this to Global Track Preset, and then select the audio track you want to use to make that preset, so in this case one, and just save. And now you can use this preset for every new project. Just go to the Preset Library again, select Global Track Presets, and it should be right there. Easy peasy. And then finally, background music. Uh, I actually don't mess around too much with the background music. I drop it on the timeline, and then the only things I do is, first of all, in the edit page, bring down the volume in the inspector to around minus 25 dB. You can also do this in the Fairlight page, of course. That's easier if you have a lot of different music clips in your video. But anyway, and then the second thing I do is in the equalizer, and this is a bit more important, I pull down the higher frequencies that interfere the most with my voice or a voice. It depends on the song and of course your voice, but usually it looks something like this. The frequencies around 7000-ish and then also the highest frequencies. You know, those are the frequencies that sound the most annoying when it's background music. And that's basically it guys. Now again, don't go for perfect, that's the most important thing. Just try and get good, clear audio, that's it. Perfect, a stretch is on the end. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.